Hey, welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel, a place for uh, gospel hope, stories from the Bible, and uh, nice looking crick here. Um, you know, we've done a lot of uh, stories from the New Testament. Maybe it's maybe it's time to go Old Testament. Pick something up from the uh, from the old books. From the books of Moses or something like that. Boy, it's a little rough here. Crossing over this brook. Have you ever like uh, woke up in the morning, felt really beat up, like like you spent the whole night rustling with an angel? Well, there's a great story when Jacob wrestled with an angel with a god all night long and prevailed. Or, or did he? Let's uh, let's find that story. It's it's from Genesis, uh, chapter thirty-two. Actually, uh, there's a lot we can learn from this story. I guess the setting's important. So so Jacob, you know, it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, like Jacob, the son of Isaac, the twin brother to Esau. Uh, apparently, he was born with his hand on the heel of Esau. So he's kind of born fighting. It sounds like. Um, guy was was something else. He uh, he tricked his older brother out of out of his birthright, got the blessing from Isaac, and then of course that set off a big fight with his brother Esau. And so the story tells how he had to flee, scared for his life. He left. He he found his wife, in fact two wives, and it got very prosperous. Lots of sheep, lots of donkeys, lots of camels, goats. Then he wanted to, uh, or God told him, to go and make peace with his brother Esau. And uh, so this is the, where this story picks up. He's, he's going to meet Esau, but he's really scared. He's really worried. What will this brother do that he cheated out of his birthright? He thinks he's going to kill him, especially when he hears that Esau is coming towards him with 400 armed men. So prior to this story, it tells all about that. You know, Jacob prays to God, asks for his blessing. You know, don't leave me now at this crucial time. And it tells how he kind of tries to bribe his brother with all kinds of gifts of, of sheep and goats and donkeys and camels that, that he's sending in front of him to pacify Esau. And then it says that he stayed alone at this brook called Jabbath with his two wives. And, well, let's pick it up here. Verse 22, the same night he arose and took his two wives and his two female servants and his 11 children, that's quite a, quite a family, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. I don't know if the Jabbok was, was any bigger than this brook here, but we got a nice ford here, so that kind of reminds us of that story. He took them and he sent them across the stream and everything else that he had, and Jacob was less, left alone. So here he's alone. It's evening, he's scared, he's tried to protect his family, his belongings, and he's about to meet his brother, he's scared. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. So this little verse here doesn't say that Jacob wrestled with God or Jacob wrestled with an angel. It says a man wrestled with him. So that's interesting. Whoever this was, and we'll find out later, it was God. It was maybe Jesus. It was an angel, because that's what it says later, um, wrestled with Jacob. So it wasn't Jacob wrestling with God. It was God chose to wrestle with Jacob. I wonder why. Was Jacob holding on to his own will, his own ideas? Do we do that when we feel really beat in the morning? Is it because we're holding on to our own ideas and thoughts? and wishes and we're not really giving in to God? Well, maybe. But it says, when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now, anyone that's seen someone with a dislocated hip knows that when you dislocate your hip, that's, that's lights out. You're done. You're, you're hurt so bad you're not going to keep on doing anything, let alone wrestling. At least I've never heard of someone with a dislocated hip continuing on with, but it says, obviously Jacob didn't stop here. So 
can you imagine wrestling all night long? Like, wrestling's pretty up close and personal. Um, you exert a lot of energy. You're grabbing, you're, you're you know, trying to force someone down, maybe some fighting. This must have been some man, must have been some dude to wrestle all night with this man. This man wrestled with him and must have seemed like Jacob was winning because he says he, he wrestled all night and prevailed. And then the guy he was wrestling with, this man, whoever it is, in order to change the equation, had to use like a, a supernatural power, touch his hip, maybe hit his hip, and dislocated it. So all along, if this was an angel, God, Jesus, could have won any time. But it let Jacob think he was winning and then changed, changed it in an instant. So Jacob didn't really win here. He lost. But let's go on here. It says, then he said, this is still the man talking, let me go for the day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Wow. So now he's got this dislocated hip. He's hurting. He's tired. He's defeated, really, even though he prevailed. But he's got this guy in a, in a death grip. He's not letting go. He's, he, that's the last thing. He's come to the end of, his, end of his resources. But one thing he will do, not do is he will not let go. And that, that's a good lesson right there. When we come to the end of our ropes, don't let go. He didn't let go. Jacob didn't let go and said, bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. So that, that's interesting. The, the man, the angel, God, asked Jacob, do you think he knew what his name was? But he asked him. Jacob had to admit, my name's Jacob. Basically, I'm a loser. I'm a sinner. I am who I am. And Jacob would have died if if he would have held on any longer because who can wrestle with God through the night to the break of day and not die? So really it was an act of mercy, of grace that Jacob didn't die in this wrestling match. But then this, this man says, then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. So there it is, that's, that's he said who he is. You have striven with God and with men and prevailed. So this man he was wrestling was God. Or was he God and man? Was he Jesus? That's a mystery. But we know it had something to do with, with God, with Christ. Something to do with, with Jacob learning and us all learning from this story. That we need God. We need grace. We need forgiveness. And we need Jesus, the Son of God, who was given by God to earth for our sins to, to, to free us, just what Jacob needed. So by, by losing this wrestling match, really, because the angel God had to, had to dislocate his hip, he prevailed. He held on. If we know, if we come to the end of our ropes, we know all we have left is God, then we win. When Jacob, then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask me my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob asked who this man was. He wouldn't tell his name. I think Jacob knew, and God knew that Jacob knew. Then he blessed him. I've always wondered what that blessing was to Jacob. It doesn't write in the Bible, doesn't tell us the actual blessing. You know, other times it tells us a full blessing. But it must have been so powerful, so special. That blessing, that's still alive today, that, that God gave to Jacob when he changed his name to Israel. Israel, by the way, means God wins or God rules. So his name changed from being Jacob, flesh and blood, to acknowledging that God wins. So Jacob called the name of this place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. And there's the key. So no one can see God face to face, let alone wrestle with him and, and live. But Jacob did. He wrestled all night. He prevailed by losing. And God spared him his life by the grace of God. My life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him and he passed Peniel limping because of his hip. So, you know, I'm sure Jacob would have much rather had that limp and have the blessing. 
And maybe that limp reminded him he's human, he needs God. Probably stayed with him the rest of his life, I can imagine. So if there's any, you know, if we feel beat up like that, and we realize we need God, we need his blessing, we're willing, we're willing to fight, we're willing to hold on until God answers us. That's how prayer should be. That's how our lives should be. That we are we have that same determination of, of Jacob. Maybe, maybe we should learn from that and also have humility a little sooner um, to realize we need God. And then God will bless. We'll bring His blessing, His grace, His answer to us. And even if we limp the rest of our lives, just to remind us of our need, we'll have the blessing and the grace, the victory of God. So I think that's maybe some of the meaning of the story. Of course. It's a mystery. I'm sure there's so much more to that, but God bless you. Keep wrestling. Don't let go. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week. Come on, Remy. Let's see if there's a bear back here we need to wrestle with.